In UML, a class is represented in three boxes. First is the class name, second is the list of attributes, and third is the list of operations. For attributes, you should only list the ones that have a realistic or say intrinsic meaning. For example, for this employee class, you may have the attributes of first name, last name, higher year, and department name. So you should not list the programming artifacts that are useful only for implementation purposes, such as private data members and private member functions. For each attribute, we list the first uh, the attribute name, colon, and the type of the attribute. If an attribute has a default value, then you write equal to the default value. And in some contexts, such as describing the relationship among many classes, you may elide the operations and even the attributes. That's because if you include everything in such context, then it will be crowded. In UML, an object is represented in two boxes. In the first box, you have object name, colon, class name, and a line below the, them. And in the second box, you have a list of attributes and their values. For example, for this employee object, this is the object name, and this is the class name, and these are the attribute names, and these are the attribute values. And again, in some contexts, you may elect the attribute value box, and uh, sometimes you may even elect the object name, and sometimes the object may not have a name. For example, in this example, these two objects, they have a name Do, and uh, for this object, it does not have a name. In that case, you just leave the name uh, blank. We need to distinguish two concepts, value and object. So value is abstract and has no identity. So what does having no identity mean? It means that, for example, say value 17, that everyone 17 is the same 17. So you have a number 17, I have a number 17. In terms of value, they are exactly the same value. But con objects are different. So an object is a concrete thing that has identity. And again, what does having identity mean? It means that for two objects, even for all the attributes, they have the same value. They are two different objects. For example, these are two city objects. For each attribute, they have the same value, but again, still, these two objects are two different objects. In computer, they occupy different uh, memory. So why do we care about the identity? Well, identity is useful in reasoning about the quality of a design. And many byte designs result from an encoding of one object within another using attribute values. And by reasoning about identity, we can identify such design flaws in the early stage. For example, suppose you are asked, asked to design a travel planning system. And in this travel planning system, a city has a name, and some populations and uh, a time zone and also a city uh, may have zero or more airports and uh, an airport has a name and uh, an airport code and an airport may serve multiple cities now let's take a look of uh, this city class if you design a city class has, that has five attributes city name, population, time zone, airport name, and airport code. Is this a good design? Well, it is not, because airport names and codes are not attributes of a city. They should form a, another object. 
Why is it bad to encode one object as a collection of attribute values within another one? Well, first, for this example, so some cities may have no airports. For example, city East Lansing does not have its own airports. And for such city objects, how can you assign values to airport name and uh, airport code? And second, some cities may have multiple airports. For example, New York City has several airports, LaGuardia Airport, JFK International Airport, Newark Liberty Airport, and so on. And for such city objects, how can you assign multiple airport names to this airport variable? Third, some airports serve multiple cities. In this case, there will be a lot of redundancy in duplicating the information of an airport in many city objects. Furthermore, the operations over airport objects may not need to know the details of the cities that they serve, for example, such as population. So when we design a class, we should apply the following identity test to each attribute or set of attributes. Test one is, does every object of this class have this attribute? For example, say student name. Well, every student has a name, so student name is an attribute. Now take a look at this airport case. Some cities do not have airports, so airport is an object, is not the attribute of a city. Test 2. Does it have operations? For values, no operations. And for objects, they have operations. For example, an airport object may have an operation to print out all the cities that it serves.